just amazing to be able to live in a city and pop outside and pick mm. like super fresh food. For many people, a front yard is a place to hurry through on the way to the house. But today we are going to meet Mark of Vertical Veg, who has transformed his front yard into a place of productivity and plenty. Mark, thank you so much for having me along today. You've got so much packed in here. Uh, why in containers though? What was the thinking behind that? Uh, well, simply, but it's <laughs> just a concrete space here. And uh, I really wanted to grow some food. And really the only way to do that without digging up all the concrete yes. <laughs> is to, to grow food in containers. What I'm noticing immediately, Mark, is that it's got some quite nice height here and you're nicely screened from the road. How are you achieving that? I see you've got some uh, apples here, for example. What else have you got here? So we've got a variety of different uh, fruits giving height. We've also got some pallets and but they do two things really. Partly they raise things up, which mm. is nice to sort of garden at that. Absolutely, height. yeah, yeah. Of, Save the back. <laughs> they also give different heights, which yeah. is nice. But um, the other thing they do with, with the pallet, which is quite good, is, is it gives you a sort of distinct place to sort of put the pots. Whereas if they're all on the ground, it becomes a bit of a sort of sea and a bit of a yes, jumble. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm not saying this isn't a jumble, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it makes it, it just makes it a bit easier to sort of look after them. Yes, you've got a sort of 3D kind of uh, puzzle rather than just all two-dimensional here, yeah. yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's have a look around the back. I'm loving this kind of stepladder arrangement. How have you put this together? Well, this, this came about, I made this when I lived in London about 12 years ago. But the great thing about it is, is that it does give you, instead of having one level, you suddenly have three levels. And often you find higher up, as well as giving you more space, often you find you get more sun up here. So for example, yeah, yeah. But I, don't, I haven't got anything on the bottom layer because actually it's a bit of a marginal place to grow down there. But up here, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's really great. Bathed in sunshine. Actually, I really like the fact that it leads the eye upwards and then at the top you've got these vertical thrusts from the onions <laughs> yeah. here. And it kind of, I don't know, I love it. It just yeah. leads it all skywards here, yeah. Lots of flowers here. Obviously, I'm guessing to attract the bees. Yeah, I mean, partly to attract the bees, partly because I feel it's important, you know, it looks quite nice <laughs> yes yeah. so yes. a few flowers and we've got a rose and this is honey work but bees love the honey work here this is really good i'm not sure what this is called we know it as bog brush the technical name is is it persicaria it or probably, it probably is we call yeah. it bog brush plant um yeah. but the bees plant, yeah. the, the bees the bees love that as well so, obviously yeah. the wildlife's finding you here it's obviously on the map that's beautiful um brilliant i noticed something interesting over there mark this looks quite far along for still quite early in the summer. Are you, what, what's happening here? Are you saving the seeds or? Yeah, they do look like they're, they're dying, <laughs> don't they? And it's a bit of a shame, really. I don't really like having things look like they're dying in my garden, but yes, exactly. This is a variety of pea called Avi Joan, mm -hmm. and they are, it's a heritage variety. They are the most delicious peas I've ever tasted in my whole life. And I was given wow. 12 seeds from them because they're quite rare mm. by, uh, Adam Alexander, who also calls himself a seed detective. Oh, right. So I had, he found them, these peas, seeds on someone. So I'm basically trying to save as many as I can to swap with other people. Honestly, they are just divine, these peas. Right. So, <laughs> so you're trying to almost like save the variety or at least give it a long term footing. Yeah. The idea to, of bulk out the seeds. Yeah, to, 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 to grow myself, mm. but also to, to share with others. And the benefit of sharing with others, as well as spreading the word, is that sometimes happens you run out yourself and if you know other people have got it you can go back and yes, get it that's again. that's true, that's very so, true, yeah, so, yeah. Yes, yeah. Great. One of the things I really love growing and actually I have a few less at this time of year in the autumn I have and spring I have a lot more um, but is, is these microgreens and um, oh, there's lots of reasons why I love growing them. Partly uh, you can grow a lot in a very very small space so if you just for example just see this this tray here which is full of a regular or, or rocket mm. um actually when i cut that i don't know if you can see but i'm actually going to get a lot uh, and it's only been growing for like just over two weeks so this is and there's lots and lots of things so there's lots of variety you can grow so this is um a regular rocket um these are pea shoots 
haven't had fantastic germination because one way of growing them is just to use up old seeds and these oh, are yes, just some course, old pea yeah. seeds so the germination hasn't been great yeah. but you know not bad though is it not I too mean, bad there's, there's enough there there's enough there yeah, yeah. um this is one of my favorite these are sunflowers, sunflowers. and then these are actually just coriander seeds from a spice store it's not I so see. it's really yeah, really yeah. really low cost again of way of growing them yeah, yeah. with these you can eat the whole thing with a root and root's got a lovely mm. uh, a lovely sort of coriandery give that a taste of flavor as well it's nice to be with another garden they don't mm. worry oh, about washing them <laughs> it's quite <laughs> tricky to wash it mark we've chatted earlier and you told me you've got worms <laughs> but uh i hear you're a big fan of them and uh well aren't are we all are they in here they are indeed yes. oh show me them let's uh, yes, okay. let's go and uh, yeah Oh, I can immediately tell these are very pampered worms. They've got all sorts in here. What You've got obviously kale leaves and all sorts of scraps. I can see some mango in there. What else are you putting in here? Uh, sort of all our scraps from the kitchen. So tea leaves, coffee grounds. You shouldn't really put too much onion and citrus in, but once it's well established like this, it's fine. Okay. I mean, basically anything in small quantities. Okay. Well, not anything. Uh, not meat and not fish, but yes, <laughs> but yeah. but any sort of veg scraps in small in, in in yeah exactly anything yeah. from a normal compost heap. And they're fantastic for small spaces because you know you can make them any size you want. So it doesn't have to be this big; it can be smaller. But if you can have fit one this big, then you can add in all your mm. pea, you know, all your other sort of veg scraps from the garden. Yeah. You know, when you have your carrot tops and your I don't know. You know, when you pull out a, a runner bean plant, you have quite a lot of leaves and things, don't yes, you? And you can yes. put them all in, which is nice to feel like you can recycle, like recycle everything. Whereas this is actually the thing, the main thing I use to feed the garden. As well as uh, using the worm compost, uh, the other way I really like to feed my plants is with foliar feeding. And you can sort of apply any, almost any liquid fertilizer can be absorbed through the leaves as well as through the roots. Um, and one that I really like to use, uh, this is uh, liquid seaweed. Okay. Because I've got a lot of plants here to do it quickly, I use this quite big uh, spray gun here. You know, I can do my whole garden with just one tablespoonful. Seaweed is very rich in lots of different like minerals and mm. lots of different uh, uh, microelements. So you're just helping to ensure that plants have got, got what they need. Um, also, I quite like it. <laughs> Good reason as any. Blueberries that we've got here are quite a high value crop. And I noticed you're going for some things here that are quite pricey to buy in the shops. Is there a, have you ever worked out how much you're saving in your, on your sort of grocery shopping bill by hmm. growing your own? Yeah, well, I did when I lived in uh, another flat over there. We had a, like a backyard, and in six months, I grew uh, about five hundred, seven hundred dollars, seven five hundred pounds, seven hundred dollars wow. <laughs> worth of food. And um, I think here I'm growing quite a lot more. It's a bigger space, so I would estimate sort of more like a sort of thousand dollars of food here. <laughs> but that's, that's partly because, yeah, as you say, a lot of stuff is high value. You know blueberries expensive microgreens things like fresh salad is very expensive mm. you know i don't think that's always the reason why people do it but it is a way you know you can it is a way of getting high quality food at a low price yeah. particularly if you mm. you know reuse the compost and use mm. recycled containers yeah. and things like that absolutely yeah. i know you're very passionate about growing in uh, pots and containers and making the most of small space uh, why should uh, more people be growing like this? And, and you know, where does your passion come from for all of this? Mm. I think uh, I think there's sort of lots of reasons. <laughs> That's sort of really sort of why I, why I really uh, I really love it. It's partly that it's just amazing to be able to live in a city and pop outside and pick mm. like super fresh food. Mm. I think when I lived in London, I imagined I had to have an allotment to do that okay. or I had to have a big garden to do that. Mm. But actually you don't, mm. uh, you can do it. And actually this space is actually really quite large compared to what I had in London. I literally just had a small eight foot by four foot balcony. Right. Right. So this is sort of quite luxury in a way, <laughs> but even in that very small space, we could still uh, pick fresh food mm. on a regular basis and it, it really does transform the food you eat. 
Mark has a great resource actually on growing in containers and pots and really packing things into the smallest of spaces. And uh, he's got a, a website as well, so I will pop a link to that down below, so do have a look. Uh, Mark, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for showing us around the garden. Thanks ever so much for coming here. It's been lovely to show it to you. Thank you. <laughs>